For the past few weeks now, we've been preparing to host a natural building workshop here on our farm. I've been going back and forth, collecting materials, uh, making sure we've got everything prepared. And we've been researching and testing out our ideas and techniques that we want to use. I've been making sure the Finca is ready to host about 8 people each day, uh, which is something we've never really done before here. So I've been doing things like filling up the water tanks, making sure we've got plenty of food and drinks on hand, and just generally doing what we can to make things a little bit easier for ourselves during this upcoming 4 day workshop. <laughs> How are you doing? You done all the sand? Yeah. Oh my god, well done. The roofing material has arrived for the goat shelter. We've gone with this um, galvanised, is that what it's called? Galvanised uh, sheet metal, um, undulated sheet metal, which was the cheapest and the easiest to get because we're limited to what we can fit in the car and this was what the building merchants had, so they were able to deliver it for us. So this video is going to be about that workshop mostly and how it went so I'll show you everything we did in just a moment. First of all, I did leave the previous video on a bit of a cliffhanger um, and I teased you with a little shot of a little puppy. Let's meet Una. So this is Una. She is a well, I don't know. I have no idea. What do you think she is? She is a puppy, and she is such a sweet, lovely girl, aren't you? Yes, you're a good girl. I think she's probably got a bit of mastin in her. Maybe her feet are quite chunky. She's also got six toes on her back feet, which is apparently not too uncommon in mastins. But uh, her mother wasn't a mastin, her mother was like a medium sized, bristly haired, white, um, I don't know, mongrel. Um, so who knows what she's going to turn out like. She was given to us by a local shepherd who just lives about a kilometre up the hill. His dog had had 11 puppies and he needed homes for them. Um, some of them had gone off to other shepherds and to work on other farms, but there were some that still needed homes. And Mauro had always had a real soft spot for the mother whenever we saw it um, up at that farm uh, tied up outside he always said what a beautiful dog so yeah once we heard there were puppies that needed a home we just couldn't resist taking one and we ended up with this little creature So the aim of this workshop was to get as far as we can on the construction of a goat shelter for our two lovely goats. On this first day we were working with one of our friends and neighbours who came from a few kilometres away and he's really good at working with wood so he helped us get the roof beams on the roof of the structure which was something that we weren't quite sure how we were going to do. So he was a huge help with that, um, I don't think we would have been able to do it without him and yeah we did manage to get all the roof beams on and fixed in place which uh, was a really good place to leave it at the end of that first day. I'm just out here in the garden doing a little bit of harvesting. We've said for this weekend that I am just going to be completely or as much as I can be hands off with the building and all of that and I'm just going to be doing everything else. Um, the cooking, tidying, making sure everyone has got water and cold drinks and got what they want and what they need um, because all of that stuff takes a lot of work as well when you're hosting something like this and it's not really realistic for two people to try and 
do a bit of everything between them. I think this is the kind of thing where it makes a lot of sense to split our responsibilities. And yeah, I've been doing a lot of building and this sort of stuff lately over the last year. And it's really Mauro's turn to lead something like this and do this project. So it's down to him this time. Me gusta trabajar con Derek porque hace todo con calma, sin sí, prisa, pero sí. sabe lo que hace <laughs> y las cosas se hacen <laughs> rápidamente. ¿Qué? Biscoff y nueces. Biscoff y nueces. <laughs> How's it going, Mao? It's very hot. <laughs> Even though we started early, it got hot pretty pretty quickly. Yeah, it's boiling now. Yeah. It must be like late thirties. What what is that? Thirty four says my phone, so it's pretty tough. <laughs> it's a good thing that Dad came because it was definitely at least a yeah, two month job. He really helped. Yeah, well it's because it's heavy stuff, like all the beams and all yeah. of that, you can't just do it on your own. It's so hot. We've even got ice in our beer. Woo. Ah, more, Woo. more. More? I can't. Poor head. No. So this is it. This is where we've got to today. The beams are on for the roof and we've just put one panel up there just to sort of see how it looks. Yeah, I'm really happy with what we've done today. It looks really good. Um, it looks more like a real structure, I think. Now you can sort of imagine how the roof is going to go. So yeah, I'm looking forward to tomorrow and what we can achieve with, I think we've got six people tomorrow um, for most of the day. So yeah, I'm really excited. It's day two. We haven't managed to get started quite so early today. What with the combination of the heat and this little potato keeping us up all night. <laughs> kind of hard to get a good night's sleep. Yeah. Una. Una! Hey! Una! 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 That morning we had a slightly smaller team for a couple of hours and the main goal was just to reinforce some of the pallets that we had already put in place. Some of the pallets were quite gappy and we wanted to put some extra boards across in those gaps. So that meant breaking apart lots of other pallets to get the boards that we needed. We also improved the way the pallets were fixed to the posts and ensured they were well secured with wire and brackets and weren't going to be going anywhere. After a hearty lunch and a nice long siesta through the hottest hours of the day, everybody got back to work at about 5 in the afternoon and actually worked all the way through until 10. Um, we just didn't want to stop. The temperature had cooled and it was just so nice to work at that time of the day. The next stage was to stuff the pallets with straw. After doing a few experiments, we came to the conclusion that adding additional boards on the pallets where the gaps were too big and then stuffing with straw was adequate to form a kind of solid uh, wall onto which we would be able to stick the cob when it came to the cobbing stage. 
We also realised that we could use canyas, which grow abundantly on our land, um, in order to reinforce the walls of the pallets a little bit more and stop the straw from escaping. Basically, we just needed the pallets to be as um, not gappy as possible. So with additional boards added horizontally and canes being inserted vertically, we ended up with sort of a grid or mesh structure, which kept the straw in nicely and gave us a really good structure to start putting the cob onto when we did that stage. It's just gone 7 p.m. and I don't think I've actually stopped today to pick up the camera and take any footage so hopefully somebody else has and we've actually got some video of what's happened today. Just going down to see what everyone's doing. <laughs> ¿Qué pasa aquí? <laughs> no, te quería mostrar cuántas mezclas, cuántas mezclas de estas crees que usamos para todo esto. Eh, ¿Cuántas mezclas? Ah, has puesto las rocas al fondo también. Ah, qué bien. ¿Cuántas crees que hicimos? Una. Esta es la segunda. Ah, ok. Y mira cómo estamos. Sí, queda súper... Mucho mejor, ¿no? Lo bueno de hacer esto por la tarde, creo, mm. es mi teoría, es que si no se seca con el sol pegándole fuego, ah, eso es se va a agrietar menos. Sí, tienes razón. Porque sí, se va sí, a secar sí. más lento. Yo lo dejaría oh, así. Deja, déjalo así. <risa> déjalo así. A veces es como una maicina. ¿Qué más? No. Ingeniería. <risa> Mira este truco que han hecho. <risa> ah. By the morning of the third day, we had managed to get all of the pallets secured in place, stuffed with straw, and we had even made a start the previous night on covering the straw with the first layer of mud. So day three was really all about the cobbing, which was the really fun part. Okay, it's day three of uh, the building project. We are accelerating the mud uh, and cob production. <laughs> and now we have enough people. So we have like two groups mixing mud and one group uh, applying the mud. And that seems to be like a good balance because they consume it faster than we produce it. And um, so for the mixing, we did this test, which is quite a common test, which is putting the soil that, the soil that you're gonna use in water shaking it and then waiting it for it to settle and basically the different kinds of soil separate so the heavier stuff goes to the bottom and which is the sand and the lighter stuff goes to the top which is the clay so then you can measure what percentage of each you have this for this example we took this from the river here and it's a lot of sand very fine sand but a lot of sand more than half of sand so we're not going to use that right now like the, the the soil that we're using now has a lot more clay and we're adding a bit of sand to get it to the right level but uh but it has a lot more clay which is the red the red soil from the from the dry lands we have across the river In terms of applying it to the to the walls, you can see there's a difference here. So this is the first test that we did, and this we did um, the chicken wire against the wall, um, stapled, and then we piled on um, mud on it. And as you can see, it doesn't work really well. It used a lot of mud, like we maybe did like three mixes mm. or four even. Uh, I think it's very wasteful and very slow. Um, but you get a, you got a thick wall. This is made of thick. Yeah, this a is thick. made of thick wall, but we don't need a thick wall because because the structure comes from the pallets and the and the posts and the beams. Mm. So we don't really need a thick wall. We really need a plaster. So we yeah. we just need to cover it. So this being so like um, 
yeah it took a long time to do it's cracking a lot we were having problems with it like not mm -hmm. sticking very well to the chicken wire and falling yeah. i think what so. we were trying to do here was make structure out of cob because the yeah. pallet wasn't well fixed and the filling wasn't well stuck in the pallet yeah so, so we were trying to use the cob to for the wrong reason we were trying to use it for, for structure but it's not structure yeah so you can see that at the bottom is wider so that's because we we're trying to pile it on and just to make a ramp uh, it's not the right idea so <laughs> this here for example we took this from one of the miguel elliott i think it's called uh, on youtube and basically what they do is they have uh, what they call slit which is like just clay and water very very runny and you paint with that and then while it's wet you apply so you paint onto the straw you yeah you paint the, the straw, straw you paint the straw and the wood mm -hmm. and then you put the mud or the cob on top of that and it helps it stick put a slip right so yeah we make it very wet so that it sticks sometimes we even wet the the straw mm. and basically we want this to be quite packed so that when you apply it it doesn't move so it's, if it's very loose straw it doesn't work very well so you want to like top up like David here is doing esto es algo que estamos haciendo que para has cambiado a español yeah something that we've been doing that works really well is um, wetting it with this sprayer so it, it dries up quite fast so to give it a bit mm. more stickiness uh, works really well so what the guys are doing here is applying the mud on the on the sticky slit, uh, muddy. Mm. They're applying the actual cob mix, right? Yeah, yeah. The sand, straw, mud yeah. mix. And it's quite um, spreadable. So that's the consistency that we're going for. It's that you put a ball and then you spread it with mm. your hand. Mm. And uh, yeah. It's the evening, it's about eight o'clock and I've just come down to see how everyone's been doing this afternoon. I haven't come down here for a little while. Um, yeah, I've been in the kitchen basically the last three days, um, which is fine. <laughs> I haven't broken a sweat, I haven't lifted a finger out here on the build. So yeah, this is where we are at the moment. We've done, they've done most of the outside um, by the looks of things. Ah yeah, look, they finished it. So yeah, the outside is done. The outside is all covered in the mud mix. And yeah, I think Mauro explained earlier a little bit about the mix that we've been doing and how it's been working. I really like this effect here of this like stripey effect where some of it is dry and some of it is wet. It's not gonna stay like that, but I think it's pretty cool. Just where we've got the planks, the mud is obviously thinner and where there's gaps, it's been shoved in thicker. So you've got this stripey effect, which is pretty nice. So today was day three, so what we've got left to do is the inside. There is a day four, which is tomorrow, Monday. Um, there will be fewer people. I think there's just going to be four, maybe... F oh no, there will be six of us. Okay, yeah. So most days we've had eight. Tomorrow there's going to be six. Um, so yeah, what's left to do is copying the inside. So same process, everyone knows what they're doing. Honestly, this is the kind of thing where like... Just having people who come with energy and enthusiasm and for them it's something new. If we were doing this it would take us months and we would be so tired after we'd done like one pallet. We would be like, it would feel like a chore. Um, but when people come and they're excited and it's something new, um, it gives you energy as well. And yeah, just feeling super grateful that people wanted to come and join us and friends came and neighbours came to help out. And I really hope everyone's had a good time. Um, I think we have had a good time. I think it's been fun. I haven't really been down here, but I think the times that I have popped down, everyone's been having a nice time. Um, so yeah, I'm feeling really happy um, and just, yeah, so grateful for the help that we've had so far. Oh, a miracle. Nice. Oh, that's super cool. Okay. Maybe not that clear. How did it fall? I didn't think so.
Day four, uh, you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Bit yeah? sleepy, bit sleepy, but uh, I'm ready. What are you doing today? So we're gonna see, first see if um, if we can apply a second layer, if it's necessary, how it sticks to the first layer. And if that doesn't go well, we'll just try to start on the inside. Mm. We're three people this morning, so it's gonna go really slow. What are you doing, Mao? For the we camera. We are making a better um, sieve for the soil because we need a very fine, uh, it's very rocky, the one we have. The other kind of soil. Do a second layer with that other kind of soil. See, see what makes difference. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. There you go. We are applying a second layer. We're trying how um, how to do many layers. So we're doing thinner layers and more runny, more liquid. But this layer has no straw in it, right? No, so. it has no straw because it, the straw is too big for how thin this layer is. So we try to cover the cracks of the first layer and uh. see how see if that second layer will crack. And if it cracks, then we'll figure something out, something different. But mm. um, the good, the so far, the good thing about this is that it's really easy to apply, so we can do a lot of, uh, of work. Um, but we'll see how it dries. That's the main thing. Just doing a little bit of seed saving. This is something I've been doing a lot of lately. This is a cabbage um, that has been in the ground almost a year now, and it's now at the point where it's flowered, it's set seed, and the seed pods are all dry. So it's time to save these seeds. Mauro has gone back to the city now. Um, he's been here actually for a couple of weeks, um, so it's going to be weird without him now for a few days. But yeah, um, we haven't really had a chance to talk about even or decompress after the workshop um, so I'm just thinking really about how it went. It was our first time doing something like this um, and we kept it pretty small scale because it was our first time um, but yeah we learned such a lot from the experience of having uh, so many people here and organizing something like this. What I think maybe I didn't anticipate was um, how much work the catering side of stuff would be I did like three meals for between six and eight people every day for the whole, um, for most of the days. It's not something that I would do differently um, next time. We would still want the food to be a really important part of the experience. I guess the heat as well was also a bit of a shocker for us. Um, we planned this weekend knowing that it was going to be in the middle of July. We knew it was going to be hot, but we were in the middle of a heat wave as it turned out and it was a little hotter than we would have expected. But I think that just comes down to being sensible. Um, we didn't work during the middle of the day. We stopped um, to eat and we didn't get back to work until five or six in the evening when it had really cooled down and we had shade over there in that terrace. So it's just about not working during the very hot hours. You just can't. It's unpleasant and it's dangerous. So yeah, I think we did all right there. Um, luckily, we're not experiencing here the really hot 40s temperatures that some of Europe has been getting. I think our hottest day was maybe 35, 36. 
So yeah, all in all, I'm, I think we're both really happy with how it went. There's very little that I would change. And the things that we learned can just help us be a little better prepared next time. I don't know if we will ever do, um, or in the near future, do like volunteering, um, like long stay volunteering type things or do workshops that you might charge for or something like that. I don't know if that could be in the future at some point, but it's not something that we're thinking of really at the moment. It's just about building community with the people that are around us, um, helping other people when they need it and counting on the support of our friends and neighbours when we need it as well. I think that is really the most important thing that we can be doing at this point in time in the world. <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's it for this video. Um, I'm going to be here a little while longer collecting all these seeds. Um, I'm never going to need this many cabbages but it's just a kind of relaxing thing to do at this point. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.